Right, we're on today, we're going to talk about the tools of the trade, what tools I carry in my toolkit. This has really been something that more new subscribers to the channel have been asking what equipment I use, so we're going to talk about that today. There is one little thing that I carry in my pocket with me every time I play golf and can't golf without it. That's where we'll start. Take your golf ball, Shrix and Z Star. That's what I use, yellow. I use the yellow because I can see it better it's in the air, just something personal to me. Draw a line on your ball, then get your dead aim ball marker. These dead aim ball markers, they've got a five prong system, so you line your ball up with one of the prongs and that's the start line of your putt. Really quite simple. I found it very, very hard to line up the line as I'm looking down at the golf ball in line with my start line for the putt. I never used to use a line on the golf ball because of that at all. Since being introduced to the dead aim ball marker, that is not a problem now. I basically lay this down, I use the prong for my initial start line of the ball, and then from there I can guarantee that my ball is lined up correctly with my intended start line. From there I can get the club face square to that start line. The alignment of a putt is now taken out of the equation thanks to these little guys here. I will leave a link in the description below. I will also leave a couple of videos after this video at the end so you'll be able to click on them and that will give you a full tutorial on how to use the dead aim ball marker. There's also a little promo code, make sure you use the promo code because that will get you a discount off it. I will leave the promo code up there. See that? Just for five seconds so you can write that down now. It'll also be in the description below and it's in the videos that I'll leave at the end of this video. Let's move on. Right, we'll start with wedges and work our way back down to driver. Most folks start with the driver, work down to wedges, but we'll do it differently. Right, first up I have the Ping Glide 3.0. Wedges, I have three wedges. I have a 50, 54 and 58. These 3.0s, the two I'm showing you just now, are 50 and 58. 58 with 6 degrees of bounce, 50 with 12 degrees of bounce. I like a little bit of bounce or less bounce with my 58 to try and play those nice tight shots. I think there is different finishes in these, but I like the chrome. I just like the whole set to look chrome. Um, some guys like a darker wedge. I like the, the, the idea behind the dark wedge is good because then you know you're, it's a reminder that you're playing a field shot, but for me, I'm quite happy being in chrome. don't even know why I told you that. Shafts of graphite Alta CB and Stiff Flex. Uh, the reason I have graphite shafts is all my irons are graphite shaft. I changed from dynamic gold Stiff 300s to the graphite shaft earlier on this year or last year and I found no loss in distance whatsoever. Trajectory is up with the irons and um, so it launches better, get the same distance, all good. So now I mentioned I have three wedges which are ping wedges. Um, the reason I'm only showing you two is because I've got one that I absolutely hate. I don't know why I got it, I thought it would rekindle my youth and I'll show you what it is. So again the Glide 3.0 but this is the i2 version. Now this is a funky shape, if you look at that there, you can see the shape of that. So when I was young, um, way back in the day, I remember Kalkavecchia winning at Troon with a copper one of these and all the lads thought that's really cool. We all had one, we all played well with it. I thought I'll get one of these, see if it feels and you know what, I absolutely hate it. I look down at it, I hate it. I can play with it, but I just don't like it. My old wedge, which I had before, which was a Cleveland Rotex or RTX 3.0 in 54, I wish I still had it, but I didn't. I sold it on, so I no longer have that. But this, I, um, I absolutely despise the look of it, but I have no other alternative right now. Same shaft, Alta CB. That is a Lamkin mid-size grip. Right, moving on to irons. Um, my irons are Wilson. I was a Wilson advisory staff player. Um, I no longer have that contract signed, so I mean, I, I can move around. I, um, that's not quite in place any longer, so I can change equipment if I like. This Wilson V6 iron forged is the best irons I've ever had. This is my second set of them. I've never ever replaced one set of irons with another set of irons that are exactly the same until now. Um, as I mentioned before, I had Dynamic Gold S300s in these. I now have Recoil 460 and S Flex. Graphite shaft all the way through the bag, four to wedge. I have the V6. The V6 is four iron to seven iron. And my four, five and six irons are all the same length and same lie angle. So pretty much like the one length stuff from Cobra, if you like. I found from testing on Trackman that if I change the length and lie angle of my four iron to match up with my six iron, I lost no distance. It's a good thing. Uh, trajectory, no difference. Everything just seemed to be exactly the same. So for me, I thought, let's try this. When I tried it with the shorter irons, no good at all. 
um, couldn't control trajectory when they were the too long. If they were the length of six iron, I was really struggling. So I have the four, five, and six in exactly the same length and lie angle, but standard lofts. And the shorter, longer irons just are easier to play, much easier to control and hit in the middle of the face a lot better, and that's pretty important. So V6 irons, Wilson Ford's V6 irons from 4 iron to 7 iron. That's a lambkin mid-size grip. So then we move to 8 iron to wedge. Look at that. Wilson Tour staff model. Blades. A little bit of through bore, old school. Again, back to the youth. Traditional dots, to be diamonds down the side of the face there. That's class. Let's take a second. It's just awesome. So yeah, eight, nine, and wedge in the tour model. I love the feel. I just like the feel of the, the shorter irons. I could have gone. I could have got the full set in these, but I don't play enough golf to really want to try and, try and hit a four iron in that model. Certainly, eight, nine, and wedge. Really nice. Really feel. Tight lies. Fantastic. Short game. Chip and runs. Just absolutely sublime. Shaft again. Recoil 460 S Flex. That's a lambkin mid-size grip. The chances of that, eh? So then we go three iron, we go away from the Wilson, we've gone Dunping, we've done Wilson. Now we go away from that, we go into three iron. I bought this off a friend of mine, so it's not a purchase that I've not been fitted for, but I just have tried it. I like it, it goes low. It is a Mizuno three iron MP18. It's a really good stick. It is, um, shaft-wise, it has KBS Prototype 85. It's an S Plus Flex. Not even sure what that means. The shaft has been pured, so it's more uniform inside and outside the shaft. Guess what? Yep, that's a lambkin mid-size. This club's great, so off the tee it's brilliant. If driver's struggling, this is a real bullet ball. I can I can hit it low, I can really punch it in there or, or out there if you like. <laughs> really good wind links driving iron. I, I just love it. It's it, it, it goes a long way. It's a real, as I say, a go-to club if I fall off driver on the day, I, I've got this to go to, it's, 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 it's a favourite, I like it. Problem with it is though, it says on the back, fly high. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it says fly high. Now that's a lie from Mizuno, it doesn't fly high. You can get the ball trajectory up, or the, the flight up there, but it, it's, it's pretty hard to do. Uh, I see it as more of a low shot into a green, so it's hard to hold a green with it. Um, I do have, have an option for that, which is a hybrid. Let's have a look at that. Hybrid, so it's old school. It's a couple of years old now. This is the Ping G400 hybrid. It's a two hybrid. It's a two hybrid and 17 degrees of loft. But this is the one that I can float into a green, so I can come down the shaft on this, take a lot off it and get a lot of height and get the ball to stop, which is handy from that distance out. See this little mark on the top? Can you see that right on top of the crown there? I let somebody borrow my clubs when I was giving them a lesson and that's what they did to it. Lesson to be learnt there. It's such a bad mistake, that schoolboy error. Shaft in this, Ping Tour and S Flex. Love the colour of that, nice sort of titanium colour, looks cool. The reason I've not gone for the 410, the G410, is because I saw no gains. There was absolutely no gains whatsoever between this and the newer model, so I just kept with the older model. Um, if it's not broken, don't fix it. I guess that's the answer there. And guess what grips on this? That's a Golf Pride Tour Velvet. Bet you thought it was a Lampkin mid-size. Reason for that is I've just never changed it. Because I can shape it so well and play all different shots with this grip on, I've just kept it on. Which is completely different than the rest of the set, but I just... I guess I grip it and I know, okay, I can I can do more with this. I, I don't know, it's just psychological. It's crazy. Driver. Let's move on to driver. Let's not mention the head cover. Again, Ping G400, G400 Max, which is designed for the higher handicapper. This is the most forgiving driver. Tony Fina was using it, Andy Sullivan was using it. Um, another couple of guys on tour were using the one designed for the higher handicapper purely because it's more forgiving. And why wouldn't you? I mean, if it's going to help you out, use it. Ten and a half degrees. Let's get the ball up there. Shaft-wise, you'll notice the hosel snapped off. That happens. Shaft-wise, I normally had the the tour ping tour shaft the same as my hybrid, but I changed that because it was a little bit softer, and the stiffer shaft I was able to keep dispersion in. Okay, so I've got Fujikura Speeder 757 in X Flex. 
Now the X-Flex idea behind that is, as I say, it keeps dispersion in. When I was, uh, I did a little bit of work with the Wilson fitter and he was telling me that when he tries to fit people, he puts them in a shaft as stiff as he possibly can, or the, the player can get away with, which keeps dispersion in. So I, I thought, okay, let's give us a try. So I took this shaft, put it in, compared to my current shaft, which was a two or ping tour shaft, which was fine. Noticed that if I missed the ball to the right or to the left, there was no coverture on it. So I very rarely tail off to the right or hook it to the left. Everything's a straight flight, which brings dispersion in. It's much tighter, much straighter ball flight, and I like that. So the really stiff shaft with the loft on the face, the trajectory is very, very good. But as I say, it's this dispersion thing, which is why I've got the X-Flex in there. What kind of grip do you think I've got? Lambkin mid-size? Tour Velvet 360. <laughs> it's got three layers of tape under it, so it plays the same as a Lambkin mid-size. It's just when I got this shaft put on, I never had a Lambkin mid-size in the shop. And finally, putter. I've had lots of putters. People who follow the channel will know I've had my... I've got many, many blades. I've got a Wilson L, I've got a Ping Zing. 1986 model. I like to go back to the sort of traditional, I like the hard face against the softball, don't like softball, don't like soft face. I've had arm lock putters, I've had Scotty Camerons, I've had Odysseys, I've had everything. If the wife knew that I'd be in trouble. So just now I'm back to old school Wilson 8802 blade. Get the head cover. So cool. Is that cool? I threw it away. There it is, old school but it's got the milled face so there's old school with modern technology in there. Love that. Clearly says there, milled. The shaft on it is the head speed shaft, which has four, I don't know if you can see that, four kinks in the shaft here as we go around. And that stops the vibration. That keeps the, it maintains the soft feel. It's quite clever actually. Um, the grip on it is, the grip on it is a Lambkin 3 Gen. I, I don't like that, that's getting changed very shortly. But you'll notice on the back of this, so there it is, 8802, is that upside down? Yep. Nice chrome finish on the bottom, that's smart isn't it? So on the back here, I was um, on my putt and launch monitor and I noticed that path was excellent, strike location was excellent, rate of putt was excellent, um, angle of attack was excellent, but the face was closing. Now this, this because it's got so much toe hang, it's designed to close very sharply, but for me it was just closing too much. So at impact, the face was always one to two degrees close, which is quite a lot. So I thought, how am I going to change this without changing my technique? Because every other element of the putt and stroke was pretty good. So I decided if I can take weight, just like your driver, if I took the weight out of the heel, that would speed the heel up and slow the toe down so the face would hold open just a fraction longer. But I was thinking, how can I take the weight out of the heel? Well, I can't, but I could add weight to the toe. So I've made the toe section heavier, I've done quite a lot of work on this to get exactly the right amount of tape and I went back on the launch monitor and I got it working. So this amount of tape here on the toe has made the heel slightly lighter so therefore it doesn't close over as much, it's squarer going through impact and I strike the ball a lot better. So that's the current putter that's in the bag, the Wilson 8802. So guys, it would be interesting to find out what equipment you use. If you can leave in the comments below, that would be brilliant. Do you use Wilson V6? Do you have the ping glide wedges like me? Are you a G400 or a G410 guy? The G410 driver for me gained one yard, hence the reason I've got the G400, which has been my most successful driver for years. I don't see that coming out of the bag. Tell me what you use, leave the comments below. As I said, I will also leave in the description below, I shall leave the promo code to the dead aim ball marker. That is a must. If, you, if you're golfing without one of them, then you're... you're you're two shots behind everyone else already. Hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, hit the bell notification. All these things help my channel and that is much appreciated. Thanks very much guys, you are awesome.